Exodus chapter 33, verse 12, Moses says to the Lord, Exodus 33, 12, you've been telling me to lead these people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. You have said, I know you by name, and you have found favor with me. If you are pleased with me, teach me your ways so that I may know you. If you are pleased with me, teach me your ways so that I may know you and continue to find favor with you. Remember that this nation is your people. The Lord replied to Moses, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. And Moses said to him, if your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. How will anyone know that you are pleased with me and with your people unless you go with us? What else will distinguish me and your people from all the other people on the face of the earth? Sabi ni Moises, Anong kaibahan, Panginoon, sa amin at sa lahat ng mga tao sa buong mundo? Kung pinili nyo kami, kung binukod nyo kami bilang inyong suriling bayan, paano malalaman ng mga tao na kami ang mga totoong anak mo? Kami ang totoong bayan mo? How will anyone know kung walang inyong presensya sa aming kalagitnaan, then we are just like any other people. Moses knew and understood the importance of God's presence in the midst of the people. What else will distinguish me and your people from all the other people on the face of the earth? And the Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing you have asked because I am pleased with you and I know you by name. Then Moses said, Now show me your glory. I want us to say these words together. Show us your glory. Let's say it in Tagalog. Ipakita niyo sa amin, Panginoon, ang inyong kalawatihan. It's a bold, bold request that Moses makes to God. Moses, a man who spoke with God face to face. Moses, a man who'd seen tremendous miracles he makes this request of the Lord, God, show me your glory. In verse 19, the Lord said, I will cause all of my goodness to pass in front of you, and I will proclaim my name. Papakito ko sa iyo ang aking kabutihan, at iyaya ko sa inyo ang aking pangalan. The Lord in your presence. I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. Now if you flip over to chapter 34 and verse 5, God does the very thing that He has promised Moses. Moses says, God, show me your glory. God responds, I'm going to cause all of my goodness to pass in front of you and I'm going to proclaim my name to you, Moses. In your presence. And in verse 5 of chapter 34, God does that very thing. Sabi ng salita ng Diyos, And the Lord came down in the cloud and stood there with him, that's with Moses, and proclaimed his name, the Lord. And he passed in front of Moses proclaiming, The Lord, the Lord, compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands and forgiving wickedness and sin. Excuse me. <clears throat> 
maintaining love to thousands, forgiving wickedness, rebellion, and sin, yet he does not leave the guilty unpunished. He punishes the children and their children for and their children for the sin of the fathers to the third and the fourth generation. Moses bowed to the ground at once and worshipped. O Lord, if I have found favor in your eyes, he said, then let the Lord go with us, although this is a stiff-necked people, forgive our wickedness and our sin, and take us as your inheritance. Kung alam mo yung context ng passage nito, kung babasahin niyo po yung mga verses in chapter 33 before, in chapter 32, God has just told Moses that I'm going to wipe out these people. Kumbaga, sabi ng Panginoon, puno na ako. I'm going to slaughter the whole nation. Moses, pipilin kita, I'll raise up a whole new nation. Moses intercedes for these people. God is ready to destroy them, to completely destroy them. But Moses has this incredible relationship with God. And because of the prayer and the intercession of Moses, not only does he receive forgiveness... God has told Moses, God says, here's what I'm going to do. I'll send my angel, but, but I'm not going with you. If I go with you, I might destroy you all. Moses says, God, if you don't go with us, we don't want to go. Kung walang inyong presensya, Panginoon, we don't want to go. We'd rather die in the desert than to go without your presence. And God listens to the prayer of Moses. It's, it's an amazing passage. God listens to the prayer of Moses and says not only will he forgive God's people, but his presence will go with them. And then he goes on to say this, verse 10, verse 10 of Exodus 34. Then the Lord said, I'm making a covenant with you. Before all your people, I will do wonders never, bo never before done in any nation, in all of the world. The people you live among will see how awesome is the work that I, the Lord, will do for you. Nice This is a stiff-necked, stubborn, obstinate rebellious people they have sinned against the Lord repeatedly they have sinned so much that God has said I'm not going with you I'll send my angel I'll fulfill my promise but I'm not going Moses intercedes says God if you don't go we don't want to go and because Moses has this intimate relationship with God God answers Moses' prayer and says, okay, Moses, I'm going to go with you. Not only that, ang sabi niya, I will make a covenant with you before all your people. I will do wonders never before done in any nation in all the world. The people that you live among will see how awesome is the work that I, the Lord, will do for you. Now, here's the interesting thing. Ito po ay nangyari after yung ten plagues of Egypt. After yung parting of the Red Sea. Hello? God has already done tremendous miracles. And these people have met with God on Mount Sinai. He's come down given them the Ten Commandments, and God is ready to destroy them all, and yet, because of the intercessory prayer of Moses, Moses says, Lord, go with us. Bagamat mga matitigas ang ulo, patawaran nyo kami, and then Moses says, take us as your inheritance. And God says, okay, I'm going to make a covenant with you. Gagawa ko ng tipan sa inyo at sa akin. 
sabi ng Panginoon, and I will do wonders never before done in any nation. Now, He's already done. Grabe mga milagro. But it seems that God is saying here, I'm still going to do even more. Amen, Baba? Greater things I'm going to do even more. The people you live among will see how awesome is the work that I, the Lord, will do for you. When I began to look at passages in the scripture about God's glory, there's so many. Ang dami mga versikulo sa Biblia patungo sa kalawatian ng Diyos. I think there's hundreds. Hindi ko talagang, hindi ko mabasa lahat sa dami ng mga versikulo. But when I began to read these verses about the Lord's glory, I'm starting to have the idea that God actually desires, God actually wants to reveal His glory. It's not like it's something that God is hiding from us, kundi it's something na nice niyang gawin, nice niyang ipakita sa atin ang kanyang kalawatihan. You know, there's several verses in the Bible that talk about that the Lord will, that the earth will be filled with the glory of the Lord. It's not just once, several times. The earth will be filled with His glory. So God desires to reveal His glory to His people. God desires to manifest Himself, to reveal Himself. Nice talaga ipakita niya sa kanya sarili sa atin. It's not something that we have to beg for. God desires to show us His glory. Sabihin natin muli, show us your glory. I wonder if it's possible that if this would become the heart cry of VCA people. I wonder kung maaring pwedeng mangyari sa ating iglesia that every single one of us would have this desire in our heart sa ating mga private prayer times, sa ating mga small groups, sa ating mga prayer cells. God, show us your glory. Pakita niyo sa amin, Panginoon, kung sino ka talaga. Ipakita niyo sa amin, Panginoon, ang inyong kalawatihan. This was the heart cry of Moses. Show me your glory. I'd like to read a couple of interesting passages in the Bible about God revealing His glory. There's so many, but I just found a few that were kind of unusual. Ang una nais kong basahin mula sa Juan Kapitulo 2, versikulo 11, John chapter 2, verse 11. Uh, this, ito yung kwento po tungkol kay Jesus nung He turned the water into wine in Canaan at the marriage uh, festival. John chapter 2, verse 11. I think we're familiar with the, uh, with the miracle of the water being turned to wine. At nakalagay po dito sa verse 11 ng John chapter 2. What Jesus did here in Canaan of Galilee was the first of the signs through which He revealed His glory. He revealed His glory. And His disciples believed in Him. I think there's at least three things we can learn from this passage. There's at least three things. Number one, Ang isang paraan, pinapangita ng Panginoon ng kanyang kalawatian sa pamagitan ng mga Himala. God, it's not the only way. It's not the only way. When I was reading all the verses about the glory of God, miracles are not the only way, but it is one of the many ways that God reveals Himself. God reveals His glory sa pamagitan ng mga milagro. So the Bible says here, that when Jesus turned the water to wine, it revealed His glory. It showed the power and the majesty of God. It showed who God is. 
But a second thing that I find interesting here, kung babasahin natin yung buong kwento patungo sa the water being turned into wine, if you read it carefully there, you find out that there was really only a handful of people who actually knew that that water was turned to wine. You had the guys who brought the water pots and the disciples. Basically, it doesn't mention there that anybody else in the whole wedding ever knew about the miracle of the water being turned to wine. Dila alam. Nakalam lamang yung mga nagdala ng tubig doon kay Jesus at yung mga disipro ni Jesus. And then you know the story, they served the, the, the wine to the, uh, the head of the, uh, of, the, of the wedding. He gave it to the groom. And they all drank, but they had no idea. So what's my point? My point is this. Minsan, ang hinaharap natin ang kalawatiyan ng Diyos, sometimes we are looking for the spectacular. We are looking for yung mga kahamahama mga bagay. Sa bagay talagang, it, it's a miracle that happens, but not everybody noticed it. Not everybody was aware of it. Most sermons that we hear about the glory of God, and I've taught these sermons myself, ang karami ng mga sermons that we hear about the glory of God, they talk, we talk about the Shekinah glory of God, how the, the, the Lord came down in the temple, and the people, the priests were not able to minister. The fire of God would fall. The pillar of cloud and the pillar of fire. How God uh, came down on Mount Sinai and revealed His glory. Sometimes we are looking for the spectacular when there are some things that are happening right next to us, the glory of God is being revealed and we don't even know it. We don't even know it. Reminds me of that passage where Jacob is uh, fleeing from his brother Esau because Esau wants to kill him. And he's in the desert and he lays his head down on a rock. You remember, remember the story? He lays his head down on the rock and he has, I'm not sure if it's a dream or a vision. He sees a ladder. And in the ladder, the angels are descending and ascending. Coming up and down the ladder. And Jacob says, the Lord is in this place and I knew it not. And then he calls the place Bethel. So we have Bethel. Now Bethel means house of God. It's the first time in the Bible that the phrase house of God is used. Bethel. In Hebrew, means house of God. Another interesting passage. Akma doon sa versikulo na yan is seen in uh, Psalms, the book of Psalms. Chapter 26, verse 8 says this. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. So the house of God is meant to be a place where the glory of God is present. Can you say amen? amen. The house of God, Bethel, it was, it was as if it's a portal to heaven where the angels had free access to come and go. In the story of the wine, the water being turned to wine, God manifests His glory through the miraculous. Secondly, not everyone was aware, as far as we know. Yung mga nagbuhat ng, ng, ng uh, the jars of water at yung mga disipulo ni Jesus, sila lang ang nakaalam na may hima lang nangyari. The third thing that we can learn from the passage is that the manifestation of God's glory caused the disciples to believe. When God reveals Himself, naniniwala ko itong isang dahilan kung bakit nais ng Panginoon to reveal Himself. 
when God reveals himself, it causes people to believe. Suddenly they say, God is, there's a God. And so I, I believe that God is really longing and desiring to show us his glory. Sabianatin, show us your glory. Another interesting verse about the glory of God. First Chronicles chapter 16 verse 24 says this. Declare His glory among the nations. His marvelous works among all peoples. To me it seems to be saying. The second half is just really a repeat of the first half of the verse. Declare His glory among the nations. Paano? By declaring His marvelous works among all the peoples. When we begin to declare what God has done, when we begin to declare how God has done something miraculous in our lives, how God has come through, how He's answered the prayer, declare His glory, the marvelous things that He has done. Show us your glory. That others might know. That others might believe. Psalm 145 verse 11 and 12. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom. And talk of your power. To make known. May dahilan. Bakit ihayag nila yung kalawatian ng kanyang kaharian? Bakit ihayag nila ang kanyang kapangarihan? They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and talk of your power to make known to the sons of men God's mighty deeds and the glorious majesty of his kingdom. Show us your glory. Show us your glory. John chapter 1 verse 14 speaking of the incarnation of Christ John chapter 1 verse 14 the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us we have seen his glory the glory of the one and only son who came from the father full of grace and truth but again what's interesting to me here is that the apostle John writes we saw his glory but how many of you know, not everyone in Israel recognized that Jesus was the Messiah. Not everyone in Israel recognized that he was the Son of God. Not everyone in Israel, in fact, many thought that he was a false prophet. In fact, there were thousands who cried out, crucify him, crucify him, and they nailed him to a cross. So there was only a handful of people who actually understood this is the Son of God. John said, we've seen his glory. So in other words, it's possible for one person to see his glory and the person sitting right next to not even notice it. Not even see what God's doing. Totally oblivious. It's like the passage I shared in the midweek service where Jesus asked the man to stand up in front of all the Pharisees and stretch out his hand. It even says there that in anger, very few times in the Bible, two or three times lamang, you can see that Jesus got angry. In anger, he asked the man to stand because of the hardness of the heart of the Pharisees. And the man stands and, and there's a miracle happens. And in verse 6 of that passage, the next verse, it says, the Pharisees went out and began to plot Jesus' death. Like, Wait a minute. They've just seen a miracle of God right in front of their eyes. In any service, you can find people who say, the Spirit of the Lord, the presence of God was amazing. And then you have five people say, hmm, it's okay. Same service. John said, 
We have seen his glory. The glory of the one and only son who came from the father. Isaiah chapter 60 says this to you and I. To God's people. Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1. Arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. Tell your neighbor, the glory of the Lord rises on you. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you, God's people. We are meant to display His glory. Amen, Boba. See, darkness covers the earth. Thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you, and His glory appears over you. God wants to display His glory in the midst of His people. God wants to display His glory through us. I once heard it said that God does not answer the casual inquirer, but rather the diligent seeker. Let's say it again. Show us your glory. I wonder if that could become our heart cry. Could that become the cry of VCA? God, show us your glory. Show us your glory. Habakkuk, in Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 2, he prays this prayer. Lord, I have heard of your fame. I stand in awe of your deeds, Lord. Repeat them in our day. In our time, make them known. Panginoon, nadinig ko, nabalitan ko yung mga ginawa mo nung panahon. God, do it in our time. Do it in our day. Ipakita nyo sa amin, Panginoon. We want to see your glory. We want to see your power. Manifest yourself. That was Habakkuk's prayer. Show us your glory. In studying the manifestation of God's glory, napansin ko na worship seems to be an integral part for God to reveal His glory. Not, not always, but so often. Sa pamagitan ng matinding pagsamba sa Panginoon, pinapakita niya ang kanyang kalawatiyan. Remember the dedication of the temple, of Solomon's temple. Extravagant, extravagant worship. Extravagant giving, extravagant sacrifices. And the Bible says that the glory of the Lord came down and filled the temple. So, so grave yung presensya ng Panginoon that the priests were not able to stand. Nakadapa sila lahat. Dahil sa matinding presensya ng Panginoon. But it was in response, you read it in Chronicles, it was in response to extravagant offerings, extravagant worship, the glory of God came. We can see in the life of Elijah, he confronted the prophets of Baal, and he built an altar to the Lord, poured buckets of water over the altar, laid a sacrifice cried out to God and fire fell from heaven it was an act of worship and the Bible says that the Israelites bowed down and said the Lord he is God Amen. <laughs> worship worship seems to attract the glory of God worship attracts the glory of God attracts his presence the Bible says that he's enthroned on the praises of his people. Wholehearted worship will bring a manifestation of God's presence. 
And Isaiah, Isaiah has an encounter with God in chapter 6, verse 1. The year that King Uzziah died, Sabini Isaiah, I saw the Lord. He has an encounter with God. I saw the Lord, high and exalted, seated on a throne. The train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphim, each with six wings. With two wings, they covered their faces. With two, they covered their feet. They With two, they were flying, and they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. There's some kind of a connection between worship and, and the glory of God. They're crying out, holy, 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 the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is full of His glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorpost and the threshold shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. The glory of God is not just for a future place called heaven. The glory of God is for the here and now. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 18 tells us this. 2 Corinthians 3.18. And we all with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's Glory. Have you ever contemplated the Lord's glory? Did you ever contemplating the Lord's glory? Just thinking about His goodness, His greatness, His power, His awesome, His the, the glory of God is who He is. It's His character. Contemplating the Lord's glory. Look what the Bible says here. Speaking to believers, present, present progressive, talking about now here on earth, and we all, mga manapalataya, and we all who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory. If we will contemplate the glory of God, if we will focus and put our attention, if this will become the cry of our hearts, show us your glory. We want to know you. And the power of your resurrection, the fellowship of your sufferings, being conformed to your death, being made like you. If this becomes our passion, we all with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory, are being transformed into his image. With what? With ever increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. Again, it speaks to me of worship. Mas dan natin ang kalawatian ng Dios. Isipin po natin ang kalawatian ng Dios. Imuni muni natin kalawatian ng Dios. Contemplate, fix our hearts, fix our minds, fix our attention on the glory of God. And as we do that, as we contemplate His glory, as we as we meditate on His glory, then we become transformed. The Bible says, as we see Him, we become like Him. As we contemplate the glory of the Lord, we are being transformed into His image with ever-increasing glory. Amen. Amen. So there's something about wholehearted worship and praise that brings God's presence. He inhabits the praises of His people. And the Spirit and the presence of God brings the glory of God. And the glory of God changes us. Nice ko paulitin. It's wholehearted praise and worship that brings His presence, for God inhabits the praises of His people. 
And it's his spirit and his presence that brings his glory. And it's his glory that changes us. We are changed from glory to glory. Ever increasing glory. In that same passage of scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 3. There's a comparison between the glory of the old covenant, the Mosaic covenant, and the glory of the new covenant of which we are a part. Old Testament, New Testament. Yung kalawati ng Diyos noong lumang panahon, yung kalawati ng Diyos ngayon. Mula sa verse 7, same chapter, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 7. Nakalagi po dito, speaking of the Old Testament, now, if the ministry that brought death, which was engraved in letters on stone, that's the Ten Commandments, if that ministry came with glory so that the Israelites could not look steadily at the face of Moses because of its glory, transitory though it was, pangsamantala, nawawala, verse 8, Will not the ministry of the Spirit be even more glorious? Hello? There's about three people who believe that. <laughs> How many of you would agree with me the ministry of Moses was glorious? I mean, come on. The fire of God on Mount Sinai. The Red Sea split in two. Pillar of fire by night, cloud by day. So glorious was Moses' encounter with God. His face shone so bright the Israelites couldn't look at him. He had to put a veil over his face. Glorious. Amen? But look what the Bible is saying. Masta natin. Kung anong sinasabi na salita ng Diyos dito. If the ministry that brought death, that's the old covenant, the law, if the ministry that brought death, which was engraved in letters on stones, came with glory, kung may kalawatian noon sa lumantipan, so that the Israelites could not steadily look, look steadily at the face of Moses because of its glory, transitory, nawawala, uh, though it was, will not the ministry of the Spirit that's our time. Amen, Baba. The ministry of the Spirit be even more glorious. More glorious. If the ministry that brought condemnation was glorious, the Old Testament, the Old Covenant, if the ministry that brought condemnation was glorious, how much more glorious is the ministry that brings righteousness? For what was glorious nung lumantipan has no glory now in comparison with the surpassing glory. And if what was transitory, yun na wawala nung lumantipan, what was transitory came with glory, how much greater is the glory of that which lasts forever? Therefore, since we have such a hope, So it's got to be Christ in you, the hope of glory. Therefore, since we have such a hope, we are what? We are very bold. Now, I think when Moses asked God, show me your glory, that was a pretty bold thing to do. That took tapang. Now, Lord, show me your glory. <laughs> tapang ni Moses. But the Bible is saying here, we have a better covenant. Sumaikling salita, 
you and I have a greater access, a greater assurance, a greater mediator, Christ. You and I have greater uh, possibility of going into the very presence of God than Moses himself. About five people believe that. Jesus said this. Of all the prophets born, John the Baptist was the greatest. Sabini, Sabini Jesus. But the least in the kingdom of God is greater than him. You may be saying here, you're the least. Well, guess what? You're greater than John the Baptist. The least in the kingdom of God is greater than John the Baptist, Jesus said. We have a better covenant. Since we have such a hope, we are very bold. We're not like Moses who would put a veil over his face to prevent the Israelites from seeing the end of what was passing away. Moses was bold enough to ask God sa kalagitna ng panahon kung saan na isang Panginoon patayin lahat ng mga Israelitas Moses was bold enough, he had enough confidence in his relationship with God that not only did Moses ask forgiveness for the nation of Israel, he asked that God's presence would go with them, that God would not just send an angel, but they, that God himself would go with them. In response, God made a covenant with Israel Though they were rebellious, though they were obstinate, bagamat matitika sa kanilang mga ulo, God answered them and said, I will make a covenant with you and I will, do, I will do great and mighty wonders that I have never done in any other, in, in, in any other nation, bagamat sila ay mga rebelde sa Panginoon, and still Moses had enough boldness even after that to say, God, Show me your glory. Show me your glory. I'm so convinced God wants to show his glory. If you can find a people who are bold enough if he can find the people who will simply believe him. And the fact of the matter is, the fact of the matter is, you and I as believers in Christ, blood-washed sons and daughters of the living God, you and I who have been cleansed by the power of the blood of Jesus, you and I who have been transformed and adopted into the family of God, you and I who are temples of the very Holy Spirit, you and I whom Christ himself lives on the inside of, you and I, I have greater access to the presence of God than Moses himself. Amen. So if Moses can ask, show me your glory, why can't we ask, show us your glory? Show us your glory, God. We want to see you. We want you to manifest your presence. We want to make yourself known. Saming kalagitnan. One of the ways that God shows his glory is through signs and wonders and miracles. Not the only way. There's many ways that God reveals himself. But one of the ways is through miracles. Kumbitsido aho. God wants to reveal himself. Kumbitsido aho. God wants this world to know that He is alive. God is not withholding or hiding from us. He is only waiting for you and I to get enough boldness to ask Him to reveal Himself. God, show us your glory. 
Let's bow our heads in a word of prayer.